Hey folks, today's lecture will focus on consumer choice theory, and we are going to try to find utility, uh, which by definition is quantifying how much satisfaction we get when we consume a good or a service, and it's actually measured in utils. So this is something that we would kind of use if we were trying to see the level of satisfaction when consumers either consume one, two, three, or more of certain goods. Now, before we start, we have to talk about some of the assumptions of this theory. Uh, for starters, we assume that there is a completeness involved in that you are indifferent between two goods. You either like A to B, B to A, and the other assumption is it's transitive. So if you prefer A to B, and you prefer B to C, you may prefer C to A. So those are two things we have to keep in mind as we move into the consumer choice theory. So what we need here is we need to know exactly what is the goods we are consuming. Let's first start off with one good, put our quantity of a certain good. Uh, we can use coffee as the example, and we can make it simple, zero, one, two, three cups. Now you could go on to four, to five, to eight, to 20, but highly unlikely for someone to drink that many cups of coffee in one given setting. Now the next column we need to know is something called the total utility. The total utility, which really means how much you satisfaction you, you get when consuming zero cups of coffee or one or two or three. And this is kind of where it becomes quite challenging because again, we have to know what type of parameter you are using when measuring total utility. Are you using a scale of zero to five or one to 10? Are you using a scale from zero to 100 or one to 1000? So this is kind of where you as the researcher can really provide your own input into the parameter you want to use in measuring total utility. I'm going to make mine simple and I'm going to use the parameter from zero to 100. And the reason why is because if you think about this, our entire life in school has been based upon this scale, this grade scale from zero to 100%. So now when we think about quantity of coffee and total utility, which I will now denote this as TU, when you have no coffee consume between zero to 100, I would assume it would be zero. You get a total satisfaction of zero, nothing, when you have drank no coffee. But when you wake up in the morning and you are very thirsty, usually at 6, 7 a.m., people go and get their cup of joe and they drink their first sip of coffee. And boy, it tastes really, really good at, at that moment. So, but, so perhaps you may have a satisfaction level that might be, let's say, 100. Now, note that every person may have their own sense of satisfaction. So again, this is not general. Uh, it would really depend on the person himself or herself. If you were to have your second cup of coffee, perhaps in that hour, later that day, your satisfaction may not be the same as it were when you had the first cup. So you could see perhaps eh, maybe not as much as the first cup of coffee, but it's still a increasing utility because it's total utility. So we can put here 180, 180. And let's say by the end of the day, you have your third cup of coffee, but again, it does not give you that same spark as it did at 6 a.m., 7 a.m., and so you have a total of 250 total utilities, or 250 utils overall. So now we can see that we have the columns we need in order to find what we call the marginal utility. The marginal utility. And now we can write that down as such, the marginal utility, and we will denote this as MU, 
And the keyword here is marginal, meaning one more, right? One more of something. Util satisfaction. And here we have the MU, which can then be uh, derived uh, into an equation, which will give us the delta or change in TU over the change in quantity. And this is why it's key to have both quantity and TU because both are needed to find the MU. So what this says is, what is your satisfaction when you consume one more, one more coffee, one more donut, one more of something? So we know at zero, there is no change at all. So we can put a dash or a hyphen. And now we can see from zero to one cup of coffee, there is a change, something is happening. And mind you that we have the delta symbol here, which tells us the new minus old. So now we're gonna get the new number from TU 100 minus the old number of TU at zero. And this will be on the numerator. Again, that delta represents the change, also known as the new minus old. Now we have delta Q, here we have one, that's the new quantity, minus zero, one minus zero. So the MU gives us 100. When we look at one to two cups of coffee, there's also a change taking place, but now it's gonna be 180 minus 100 on the numerator. over two minus one, which is a change in quantity on the denominator. And this gives us 80. And then last but not least, we have a change yet again, one more change from two to three. So here we're gonna have 250 minus 180. And this will be on the numerator over three minus two, that's the change in quantity on the denominator, which gives us 70. So notice one thing, notice that when we focus on TU initially, if we were to graph these two and put Q on the X axis and Y uh, for TU, all that we're gonna see is an increasing slope. It's going to increase at 100, 180, 250. And that's not much information that's useful, but what is more useful, however, is looking at the marginal utility that says satisfaction you get when you consume one more. And now we can see that as you consume one more, satisfaction is actually diminishing. When you, in, when you increase consumption by one more cup of coffee, your satisfaction of drinking that cup of coffee is now decreasing. And we can call this the law of diminishing marginal utility, the MU. And this law states that as you consume one more of something, the satisfaction will diminish over time. And there are a lot of examples you can use today to kind of illustrate that. If you have a simple graph as such, you can put it on the x-axis, y-axis. Let's say you can put money on the x-axis and on the y-axis you can put here happiness. It is true that you are going to feel very happy as you earn more money. But what happens over time? You tend to see your curve looking like such. Because as you earn more money, yeah, you get happy. But as you earn more money, people will know you have more money. And the more money you have, the more problems you will have as well. And then money, I'm um, sorry, your happiness will then decrease as you earn more money. 
So that can be true of almost anything. In the case of happiness, we can now replace happiness for satisfaction. And on the x-axis, we can replace money, let's say for hamburgers. So it's true, when you have your first hamburger, you are bound to get a great deal of satisfaction, but as you increase your consumption for three, four, five, six hamburgers, you tend to see your satisfaction decrease. And that's the law of diminishing marginal utility. And that's what's happening here with coffee. Right? One cup of coffee, 100, two cups, 80, three cups, 70, it is slowly decreasing over time, or over in this case, one cup of coffee. So once we know the MU, this is kind of vital because now we can actually plot MU on the y-axis, quantity on the x-axis, and see something similar to the graph as such. And this is key because again, this can give us information about your satisfaction level as a consumer, whether or not you are very much satisfied at one cup of coffee, or perhaps if we could maybe squeeze one more cup of coffee depending on your satisfaction level. But to make it more interesting though, we need to know now what is the price of the coffee that we are about to consume. And if price is a factor, which it is, we can now find something called the MU over P. MU over P. And price is usually given. Let's say the price of coffee, let's make this a latte, could be up to $5. And now we can see that we have what we need. We have MU and we have price. All that we have to do now is simply plug it in. So at quantity zero, there was nothing for MU. Right? We can't solve for zero, but we can solve MU at one cup of coffee. It's gonna be 100 over $5. For two cups of coffee, it's gonna be 80 over $5. And for three cups of coffee, it's gonna be 70 over $5. And once we know what the MU over P is, we can now see that we're bound to have our MU still decreasing once price is known.